Last time we spoke about what Bruce Garriott wrote about in the Ottawa Sun, it was talking about the Ottawa Senators and how they would not trade third and fifth overall at the 2020 NHL entry draft for first. That was a big deal. We already talked about that. We get it. But we have ourselves another Bruce Garriott article over here on the Ottawa Sun that I wanted to go over because it goes over a few different options as to what the Ottawa Senators may have if they decide to go after a goaltender. This is the article right here. There will be goalies available if the Sens decide they need another one. This was posted about a week ago on August 20th on the same Ottawa Sun platform, written by Bruce Garriach, and it goes over a few different options. He says here that the plan is to go with Anders Nielsen and Marcus Hogberg next season. But if that doesn't happen, then Pierre Dorian, DJ Smith, and goalie coach Pierre Gruul will have wait for the options for the organization because it all starts in net. The article goes over first a few different UFAs that may be available, the same ones that we've been talking about in discussions relating to other teams, Markstrom, Robin Lehner, Corey Crawford, etc. But these names would be on the Sens list if they decide to get a veteran, but many of these goalies will have plenty of options. That may mean the trade route is the best way to go. So, there are a few different goaltenders that are discussed here in this article as to whether or not the Senators could go after them, if there would be value in acquiring a goalie like this, but before we get into any of the actual names, let's get into the philosophical argument as to why the Senators would even want to get a goalie. I'm of the belief that when you have poor NHL teams, it doesn't, in theory, take a lot to make these teams bad and turn them good. Sometimes it can take years for teams that are poor to become good again, but other times we can see that it is possible for teams to quickly turn things around if they have the right assets. The Ottawa Senators to me are a team that, in my opinion, I could honestly see them having that ability to turn things around sooner rather than later. It's a combination of assets they already have, players they already have, and the circumstances of their economic status quo. Right now, the Ottawa Senators have $7 million in cap space, and going into next season, they'll have a projected $40 million in cap space. They've got contracts to sign for Mikhail Bodker, Chris Tierney, Connor Brown, Duclair, Rudolph Balzers and a few other young guys, and in my opinion, a lot of these players are not necessarily guys that can come back and demand a boatload of money. Is that fair to say? Probably what you're spending at most to re-sign the guys that you want to keep. It's probably about 10, 15 million dollars, something like that. We know Pierre Dorian doesn't like his team spending money, now doesn't he? So, if you're able to get all your players that you want to get re-signed under that formula, then, you know, you got yourself 25 remaining million dollars in cap space, and that's a lot of money. In a flat cap world like we're going to have for the next few seasons, something like that amount of cap space can really help your team out when it comes to negotiation tactics and being able to enforce your own rules in trades. The best players on the Ottawa Senators are guys like Brady Kachuk, it's guys like Thomas Shabbat, they're very good young players. And we know that young players are on the rise in Ottawa because they got 3 and 5 at the next entry draft. They can legitimately take two NHL ready players if they use their picks correctly here. Their third overall pick is going to get a guy who probably is NHL ready. Quinton Byfield, in my opinion, can play in the league next year, although you can make the debate as to whether or not he should. But if they go ahead and pick a Lucas Raymond, for example, with their fifth overall pick because Detroit goes with Perfetti at number four, then all of a sudden, that's a brand new line you create. Kachuk, Byfield, Raymond. Very good stuff. Add to that the money that you still have left over, $25 million, you can go after a good star forward UFA, maybe even two of them. Or you can go after a top D-man, a Tory Krug, a Petrangelo, however you want to slice it. And if you make a pitch to any of these teams and you say, look, we've got these brand new hot rookies coming in, they're NHL ready. 
We want to bring in you, Mr. Taylor Hall or Mr. Alex Petrangelo, because we feel that this team can quickly turn things around. And the final piece that we're going to add is a veteran goaltender who can come in here, show Marcus Hogberg the ropes, and give Anders Nielsen a little bit of an easier job. Because Craig Anderson, well, he's expiring next season. We don't really know if he's going to be back. So what do you say, Taylor Hall? You want to sign with us now? And in that perspective, where you say, you know, the Senators have the ability to turn things around quickly if they wanted to, this is why the idea of acquiring a goaltender may seem somewhat valuable. The Ottawa Senators' goaltending tandems last season was Anders Nielsen, Hogberg, and Craig Anderson. None of them were particularly great. They all had poor stats. I mean, they were all above a 9.00 save percentage, which is good, I guess. But... The goals against average, you can definitely get better than that. If you go looking for it and you start offering up offers, I think you can probably get a goalie who is somewhat better than Nielsen, Hogberg, or Anderson. So let's go back over to Gary Ocha's article and read what he has to say about the Penguins, the Rangers, the Coyotes, the Hurricanes, and the Predators. The Rangers, he mentions it's Henrik Lundqvist, but is he the right fit for a Senators team that is rebuilding, quote-unquote, and would he even want to go to a team like that? Well, we already talked about it, the Senators don't need to be rebuilding for long if they play their cards right this offseason. For Pittsburgh, it's Matt Murray or Tristan Jari. This is the same kind of argument we talked about this with the Detroit Red Wings, whether or not either of these two guys would be sent over in a trade, mostly because there's no real opportunity for these players to say no. They're both RFAs, they don't have any no moves or no trades or whatever, and the Penguins are going to need to re-sign one of them. Because they just acquired Kasperi Kapanen as well, there's less cap to sign either or, and there's already a whole bunch of speculation and confirmation from Rutherford himself saying that there's probably going to be a trade. So if the Senators are in on that, hey, maybe get yourself a Tristan Jari. You never know what he can do in front of a hockey team that really wants to win. The Coyotes have Antti Ranta and Darcy Kemper, and the Hurricanes may decide to do something with Mrazek or James Reimer. So what he's doing here is listing off two other teams who have two very good, capable goaltenders and asking whether or not these teams would want to make moves to get assets back. So for Ranta and Kemper, honestly, these two guys kind of got lit up against the Colorado Avalanche. Kemper had a few games where he looked absolutely incredible. If this guy is ever on the market, it'd be a wise decision to go after him because he's a very good goaltender. As for the Carolina Hurricanes with Mrazek and or James Reimer, we've seen a lot of consistency issues with either of them. Sometimes they can both look really great, other times they can kind of look kind of poor depending on what night they play on, but obviously there still is somewhat of a sense of value in acquiring a goaltender who knows what it's like to win a play-in series and eventually lose in a play-in round to the Boston Bruins. Now, you can say whether or not that's a good experience, but experience is experience, and the bottom line is, in my opinion, I'd feel safer playing in front of a Peter Morazic or an Antti Ranta instead of playing in front of an Ottawa Senators goalie, and that's no disrespect. I get that the goaltending is a reflection of the defensive cover of the team in front of them as a whole, but still, playing on a winning team also influences a goalie's mindset and being able to be consistent and all that. So there's a lot of value to me in exploring the idea for the Senators of acquiring another goalie in a trade, especially if that veteran goalie can help you mentally win some hockey games. Get over that hump and start getting more dubs. And if you combine all this stuff with the money that you got, the prospects that you're going to bring in, the new guys on the block from the 2020 NHL entry draft. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I believe that the potential is there for a very, very quick rebuild. And rebuild, I mean, not from 0 to 100, 0 to Stanley Cup favorite, but rebuild as in from 0 to actually competitive, from 0 to fighting for a wildcard spot and barely missing out with 5 games left in this season, that kind of competitive. To go from a hockey team that was literally second last in the entire league to that, honestly, I think it's a pretty good thing. But to me, it's scary because I can honestly see the Senators pulling it off depending on how they use their money, if they're able to make trades, and if the prospects they bring in do as well as we know they can. 
So talk to me in the comments below if you think this is a valuable idea going after a veteran goaltender who can secure the pipes, give Hogberg, Nielsen, and Craig Anderson, if you even decide to bring him back, an opportunity to rest up once in a while, and who can play behind a team that can look better. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea. I hope you enjoyed this edition of that Trollist 99. And bye.